This illusion is called Sojourn. It was done on an old 6x8 canvas artist loft panel. It's hard to pinpoint when this character of the giraffe neck, you probably call it, came about, but it's continued to evolve into what you see today. Yet another rendering of it reimagined, going through some obscure dilemma. If I had to guess, this is my fifth or fourth time painting this figure. The figure is crouched as it attempts to rein in its head. Its hands were meant to hold it, but the head has been evasive and the hands attempt to secure it were fumbled as it escapes to the forefront of the painting, eluding the body, abandoning it, or attempting to guide it further. The head wants to exert its authority and is trying to express to the body its desire for freedom without limitations. Break down aside, what do you see? What is this painting conveying to you before, without my analysis, and now after? Share in the comments your thoughts. Sojourn took an hour and maybe five minutes. From my 9 by 12 canvas journey, I learned how to put down paint more conservatively, methodical, so I can better build up without it becoming muddy, which was an issue in the past when I attempted to work small. I would put down too much paint, then have to wait for the paint to dry, and in the process, I would have lost my underlying concept sketch. I think if I continue to work on such small surfaces, I could improve my time with practice. While I worked on it, albeit in like infinitesimal strokes of color, which sort of is a head trip time-wise when I already have such an issue with time, I thought the underpainting had come together in around 38 minutes. Additionally, towards the end, I would have been done sooner, but I wasn't happy with the head, the colors weren't balanced, and even now, I think, because the head and the hands were more towards the bottom of the canvas, they really missed my attention, but I don't want to nitpick it. However, it isn't the cleanest due to the canvas. It's not toothy so much. That's not the right term for canvases, is it? I'm not sure what the word would be, but this canvas has texture, um, sort of like rough cloth, so... It caught my paint if my hand wasn't exactly parallel to the canvas or unsteady in the slightest. And I know that I think some people sort of get rid of that by doing gesso layers before they paint, but I don't actually like painting on really smooth surfaces. It was something that I had to adapt to when I was working on those canvas paper paintings. Um, but the unsteadiness and like the messiness really shows up in the neck, which again is towards the bottom of the canvas and I actually didn't feel the best blood sugar wise. I think it was spiking, so my heart was racing a little bit. To describe it, it's almost like I had been running or something when I was just sitting trying to paint, and that's a very, a very grating experience. But speaking of which, I made cookies yesterday. Cake cookies, actually. I meant to bake them two or three days ago before my ideal with my endocrinologist, but that whole thing really fouled my mood. So I put the partially made cookie mix slash cake mix in Ziploc bags, and I almost threw it away because I was so upset, but I'm really glad I didn't. However, at the time, I didn't think it was a good idea to bake while angry. Baked goods are supposedly made with love. That's what they say. For me, I think it's more of an energy thing. And I have, like, a, like intention. It's, like, a thing for me. But when I told my mom my reasoning for not making the cookies before yesterday, she laughed. But, like, really, be honest with yourself. Nobody wants a cookie made with rage or panic or anxiety. Watch any baking show. Nothing good will ever come of that. Now, back to the cookies. I alternate between strawberry, dark chocolate chip, and toffee chip. And red velvet dark chocolate, and toffee chip. Both are made with cake mixes. But to make them cookies, you add a teaspoon of baking powder. And I also learned when I make the red velvet, due to the cocoa powder in the cake mix, it makes it a bit drier. So I either use coconut oil because I think that has like an extra fattiness, or it goes slightly over the one third a cup line on the liquid measuring cup 
And the toffee edition was inspired by the Tasty video with Alvin. I was never, ever inspired to make those cookies. There's no way I would ever do that much. And I don't like brown sugar cookies. They taste icky. I don't know. It's like a very, it's a very brown. It's very like sort of like molasses-y forward. And I'm like, I don't know who enjoys molasses like that. It's, it's gross. It's gross. Um, but with my cake cookies, they only take 10 minutes. And they're my favorite thing to eat when my blood sugar is low. And it's also, I don't know, they're aesthetically pleasing. You know, with the, the red, the pink, the brown, and depending on what cake mix you get. Sometimes the strawberry cake mixes have actual bits of like real strawberry in them. So then it's like the pink of the cookie and then like the brighter red bits of the dehydrated strawberry. And then like the goldish brown of the toffee. It's like Valentine's Day every day. And I'm not even into that. But it's just like, oh. I love myself <laughs> enough to eat these, but also sort of poison myself a little bit. Anyway, if you take anything away from this video, it is art, truly art, and art goes on, so I will in my next video. Thank you for watching.